our, our, um, yeah, our decision to follow Christ, he says, you know, to have a compelling vision for him. And I was in my mind when God told me to do a vision, I'm like, a thousand disciples. And the Lord says, ten thousand. And then and my friend, pastor, who's also, you know, like the one that I mentioned, he's, God's given him a vision and there was a prophetic word that was spoken over him the last few years. There will be one billion soul harvest. And uh, I'm like, okay, so I'm, I'm, I've got to do my part. But um, this is what God wants to do. Um, to raise missionaries is, is not, um, you know, a, a, a term that we use a lot. Yeah? Um, however, a mission statement is important, and um, being coached in this is really, really, really um, simplified things for me personally. So I'm just going to read the mission, mission statement for me. My personal mission in life is to empower lead and transform the political system through evangelism, raising up missionaries who are proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom in their mission field by simply praying, ongoing intercession and ongoing partnership. So, talk to them about the Ecclesia. Um, but I don't want to go too much into that. I want to just share the brutal facts about our city in Brisbane and Gold Coast. There's 3.3 million people in our city. And um, in Acts 19, if we read, does anyone can get Acts 19 out? Who's got a Bible? Is that their Bible with you? Someone? Yep. So if you don't have a Bible and need one, there's a couple here. Just if someone can read Acts 19, and um, Acts 19 verse, let me see, verse 7. So before we read that, the Buddha facts, I was, like I said, um, Brisbane just had that open, uh, rather last one, maybe you can read it, um, it's that how do we reach 3.3 million people? Because 92% of those people, and these are statistics of facts from the Wikipedia and the governmental websites, they are far from God. They don't know God. And so um, the question is, the, the 8% that are you know, Christians, so to speak, 2% are actively doing something about the world around them. So that leaves with 92% of people that are far from God. And if they die today, um, they're going to hell. That's the brutal facts. Um, and 92% and of 3.3 million people, that's um, you know, 3 million people. Let's just say 3 million people. And that, for me, is a daunting thought. Because whose job is it to reach the lostness in your city? And I don't know how many people in Ballarat. Um, there's probably not that many. There's not not like Brisbane and Gold Coast. Um, what's three hundred thousand or two hundred thousand? Too much. In Ballarat. Ballarat only. One hundred ten. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so one hundred ten thousand people. Yeah, yep. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No one gives us a real figure. No. <laughs> yep. I'll find out. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So so. So the question is, am I willing, this is the question that I have to ask myself, am I willing to sacrifice my life to reach um, you know, 3 million people in our city? And that was a, a, a question that I had to question myself and, and the, the response to that wasn't a quick, yes Lord, I'll go. It was a bit of a hesitancy in my spirit, my, my, I'm just being honest. And I cried, I, I, I wept to God. I said, God, why am I feeling this? It was like this weight on my shoulders came. And because God is giving us a burden for them, and so um, the quick answer, or the, it took me a few days to answer that. I said, "Yes, Lord, I will go." And so that's why I started to re to realize I need to, to work with other people who have been doing what what we're uh, looking to do here. And the best way to look where, is in the Book of Acts 19. So we're going to read chapter 19, verse uh, 7 to to 10. That's 7 to 10. And this is Apostle Paul, um, you know, obviously in, 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 um, in Asia. And around that time, there was eight, between 8 to 50 million people. Yeah, so let's see, what, how did they reach losses where there was no place left? Now, the men were about 12 in all, and he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. But when some were hardened and did not believe, but spoke evil of the way before the multitude, he departed from them and withdrew the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus. And this continued for two years, so that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. 
Wow. So in the space of two years, everyone heard the gospel. Everyone. That doesn't mean that they all came, but they all heard the gospel. So is it possible for us here in Ballarat, how many people were here? 127,000. Is it possible for that to happen here? Just in the space of two years. If Apostle Paul did it, and obviously obviously he's Apostle Paul, we know he wrote the two-thirds of the New Testament, but, but think about it. We have the Holy Spirit today. We have Him. We have Christ dwelling inside of us. So there has to be something done differently. And so... I, th- I believe the, the answer should be yes. Yes, we can reach these people. And it's not going to be maybe the way you think. It's not going to be like, well, we're just going to do lots of evangelism events and we're going to get a lot of people in the kickstart and we're going to do lots of house churches. I mean, all those things might have to happen um, and God wants to use you for that, but it's going to be a bit more simpler than that. But Jesus used 12 disciples and out of those 12 disciples, he had another 500, but he also had, you know, spent with the 5,000 where he fed them and he taught them. Then there was a, the 12 disciples, but he only spent time with three. Three of them, mostly, was John, Peter, I think, and uh, was it uh, Andrew? Those three disciples he spent more closely with. And if you ask God, God, I want to I wanna be like Jesus. I want to go and make disciples. And if I don't have a disciple, Lord, send me a disciple in my way. And when you ask that question, God's going to send you a disciple even too. And then you're going to have to work with that disciple and help him know Jesus, someone who maybe doesn't know as much as you. But work with that person for two, three years. Show him. Get out there. Show him how to pray for people. Show him how to, uh, or her, or family. Show them how to do simple meetings that you consistently meeting together. Show them how to be accountable. Uh, all those things, we need to work with two, three people in our journey. If we do that, if everyone in this room did that over the next two, three years, we would have had half a dollar that one for Jesus. I'm being honest. That's, that's what's happening in other parts of the world right now. And I'm seeing in my own eyes. I'm almost falling over what's happening in Haiti, uh, in Florida, by, by a guy called Troy Cooper, and uh, in Benji, in, Den, um, in Germany. Um, they are moving with God. And they're taking lots of people with them. They're seeing thousands of baptisms per week. These aren't numbers pulled out of thin air. Because they started 12, 30 years ago, but their first four or five years of their life was hard. It was, I wouldn't say, because say, it's still hard now, but it was, it was getting in there and doing things different. It was a long-term discipling, one-on-one people, two people, three people. And I don't know, have you, anyone here heard of David Watson? Have you heard of David Watson? He started his ministry in, I think, 1978. Anyway, in the first four years of his life, he had no fruit. In fact, the funding for his missionary, the people that were funding for missionary, they were going to cut his funding three and a half, uh, three and a half years into it. And the reason they, they weren't, were going to do that is because they weren't seeing any fruit. They, he was just sent in a mission field. He was just actively doing what God's calling him to do. But they funded him. And about three and a half years into it, they rang him up and said, David, where's, where's the disciple? Where's the people that you know, you're supposed to be on the mission and, and we don't see any fruit? And they said, wait a minute, just wait a bit more. And about a year later, this man, while he was in that field, 10 people he discipled. Those 10, each one of them, discipled another five or six at the same time. So after four and a half, five years, there was already 180 fellowships, microchurches who had other fellowships. So think about in two, three years what happened. Compound interest. Compound, have you heard the term compound interest? It blew up. It accelerated to hundreds of thousands of micro churches and people are, are discipled properly to know to walk like Jesus. Not none of this like come to my church and you know and I'm the pastor and I'm trying to do everything. It doesn't work. And and, and many people uh, who have continued doing that path, they, they, they're fighting a losing battle because it's like going around the same mountain expecting different results. In fact, one guy in Iran said sort of like this: in the West. Uh, as a pastor, because he was living in the West, he's there now doing mission work, and he's, he's gone half, half for Jesus, Maranatha group. Um, anyway, in the West, if you're a pastor, you lead a church over the next you know, 10, 20 years, for instance, and in that time, you're hoping that maybe one, maybe one or two people, they can do the same as that pastor. But maybe, 
Maybe he might have another church to do what he's, that, that he do. And in the end, they might just get one. But in these places where there's a multiplication, they've got a different, um, different DNA. They see things differently. Uh, and, and it seems like we've got, a, we've got some things to catch up. I, I'm saying this for myself. We've got to catch up with what God's doing. Because he's, he's in front of us. We're praying for loss. We're praying, Lord, bring, bring souls. The harvest is plenty. The labors are few. Lord, send me, send me. And then the Lord's already saying, go. I've already got something ready for you. But we're like, oh, no, I think I'll do it next week. Or I, I, I'll wait till I'm all equipped. I, I've got to get more, a bit more training. I've got to... But God says, no, just go. Go. And um, I think that's the part where we have to just let go of our old man, our old woman, and step into Christ and let Him uh, take the wheel of our lives. So I hope that sort of helps, and, and we'll frame with what I'm going to share here on, on Christian versus Disciple. But, but that's, that was the, sort of a, a bit of a vision over the next 12 months. We want to have a, a, a basic plan, and we want to make ourselves available um, and become practitioners to train leaders to do kickstart trainings, three-touch training using no place left model and other fur fields tools, which is what we're going to talk about when we do the three circles on the whiteboard. We're going to teach you to show how easy it is to share the gospel in three minutes with somebody. Excellent. Praise God. Hoping this is going to work. Yep. So, Christian versus disciple. I haven't got any glasses on me today. I left them in the car. But, we, huh? You left, left your glasses. Yeah, I left my religious glasses in the car. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, but you got glasses there. P- P- can I just borrow your glasses for one minute? No, I'm just going to, just for instance, these aren't my glasses. These are my religious glasses. So, we've got to remove our religious glasses. This is the, the main thing, like, it doesn't suit me, these glasses. It's, it's, it's not, not for me. So in, in this training, uh, Christian disciples, and, and, and we've got to be ready to, to remove these and put them away, yeah? We really have to, um, to, to get what, 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 um, what God wants to do. And we've got to test everything against the Scripture. So everything that I say today, um, don't take my word for it, or don't think that I've got it all together, because, again, I'm an apprentice for Jesus, but test everything against the Scripture. I believe it says that in 1 John as well. 1 John 4 or 5, it says, test everything that uh, uh, the Holy Spirit uh, will be tested. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you and also be, pre- be prepared to be offended, yeah? We've got to be prepared to, you know, don't walk, don't walk away or um, say, well, I don't agree with that and then you like, you know, start cutting people off out of your life. Just, if, if there's an offense there because maybe something is not, um, you know, sitting right with you, just have a humble heart, yeah? Have a humble heart and an open heart. Don't run away because God is moving. Amen? So, Jesus is, is our, our shepherd and He's the way. He's the truth and He's the life. And so, um, even even as, as... Oh, good day, Phil. Hello, mate. Bless you. Good, good to see you. Made it. Yeah? Oh, bless you. I want to say good day, man. I want to see you for ages. Bless you. Okay, from work, yeah? Yeah. Good on you. Thanks for joining us. Uh-huh. Yeah. Excellent. So Jesus is the shepherd, um, and, and, and this is what what um, what he gave us. And, and, and um, the shepherd himself is um, he's looking after his sheep. And uh, he left the ninety nine to look for that one. Um, and so when he uh, you know when he looked for that nine, he that one and left the ninety nine. He also is is telling us and gifted us um, you know to go uh, and, and leave the ninety nine, leave the flock, and go look for that one that's lost. And um, so, my, the previous time, previous life, as before I knew Christ, you know, over many, many years, um, you know, to I know, you know, the way that I know Jesus now, I think it's in the same pattern as your, your, you know, all the, a lot of you are married here. I'm married. I got married 12 years ago in Salada, but in the same way that I married my wife and I'm faithful just to her, um, the shepherd, the high priest, wants us to be faithful to him uh, and not have anything else. But have him the forefront of, of you know, and, and, and always look for ways to have a pure heart towards him because he has a pure heart towards you. And so, um, I will remain close to, to, to Jesus. I want, to, want him to be my first in my life. I don't want to. I don't want anything else to take first place than him because he's the one that 
that actually allows me to, to see things differently, to have a different perspective on life. So my wife is not my first, and um, I'm not saying that because she's not in the room, but it's the truth. Um, I really put Jesus first before I met her, and she's got Jesus uh, as her, f- uh, you know, first in her life, uh, you know, before me. And I recognised that after we got married, six months into our marriage, um, you know, we're driving towards the city doing something. I come in one evening, and as we're driving, there's a bit of silence in the car. And in that silence, I started hearing someone speaking in tongues. Of course, it was her speaking in tongues. And I'm like, in my spirit, I'm like, what's going on here? She's talking to God, but I'm in the car. I felt a bit of jealousy. I could feel like, yeah, there's, I didn't say anything to her straight away, but I felt like this is uncomfortable. She's got another lover, but it was Jesus. And, and anyway, a few weeks later, I told her. I told her how I felt. And she goes, of course, I, I love Jesus with all my heart. Is this everything for me? You know, God's just, you know, I wasn't looking for anybody, but here you are, like, you know, now you're with me. But, but in the same way, in the same way, I felt the same way about Jesus. And so we, we had that discussion later and how, you know, that, that, that fits in with, you know, with who we are. So anyway, I became an apprentice for Jesus and I recognized this is the, 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 the everyday thing, um, you know, that we want, we want to, um, to, to stand for. So there is hope in, in, in all our stories because our stories are all different. Everyone in this room may not have a story that you've been to jail and you spent six birthdays and seven Christmases in, in jail like me. But that doesn't matter. You could be in church all your life being good, like the righteous son who was with the father and the, the lost son left and he stayed in the house all his life. But even he, he could have a testimony uh, you know, in him. So we are here because we desire to obey Jesus. Yeah, We want to obey uh, he was all that we are. We want to uh, ha- have him as, as the only person in our life that, that takes all our uh, all our affection. Everything that's about him uh, in, in adoration, our prayer time, uh, you know, in, in, in the word, in learning, and meditating, or studying it. Um, it. It just it has to be him. Otherwise, it's not worth living. It's not worth you know getting up in the morning, um, you know, for anything else. So. The other reason we might be here is because you're questioning the methods that you have been shown in leading people to Christ. Yeah? Um, who's here like that? I know that someone said today, like, there's something more. There's got to be something else. You know, we're not seeing it, but we, I know there is something. God's shifting in a few people in, in those you know, comfortable places, and it's, God's trying to get them out and, and see, you know, see with the different uh, lenses, different, um, yeah, different set of eyes. So. We're questioning the methods, you know, um, you know, as people are being led to Christ. But also, you want victory over sin in your life. That's another reason why I'm here. I want, I want to be able to have victory in these areas. And so, um, I want to be effective. And um, also, you may be here because you're confused and seeking answers. So, in whatever category you're in, we all have a reason. Maybe there's another reason. Um, who has another reason than that one? No one? So just, I'm, I'm sure you can think about others l- later on. Fine tuning. Fine tuning? Just yep. trying to you know other, other, other avenues to get through to people. Yep. That's, that's what I'm here. Yep. That's Excellent. Wow. Yeah. Yep. That's so good. Yeah, yep. Well, I'm, I'm looking for the doors to open. Yeah. Um, and yeah. And instead of sitting idle, I want doors to open. I want people yep. to guide me and lead me. So. Yep. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, Christine. Like Sorry. God has given us all it's a spiritual gift of some sort or another. And I believe it's time now. He doesn't want us sitting. He wants us all to be using our gift in yeah. the time to get his kingdom. And I believe it's the time now. When, yeah. Um, God's saying, okay, go on. It's, yeah. It's not just about pastoring, it's about everybody. Yeah. Everybody using they gifting Yep. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with you. And that's God's given us all giftings and, and, and like my sister I forgot your name, sorry? Delise. 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 Um, Delise um, mentioned that before as well, that we all have giftings and, and God wants to use everyone in the capacity and the measure of faith that He's given us to use that so we can actually really enjoy living, enjoy, you know, the benefits of, of you know, God, but enjoy the benefits of our labor towards God, you know, it's like towards getting other people in God, God as well. Because we see a hurting people and my heart hurts. I don't know about you, but I'm hurt. 
I'm hurt in, in, the, in the state of our nation at the moment, in the state of you know, God's people, um, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm broken. Uh, many times I don't eat for many days and weeks because I just, I'm, I'm on my face before God saying, God, do something. And God says, that's right, I made you. And I'm reminded why I'm here. So Christ, Christian, the word Christian appears in, in the Bible three times you know, in the New Testament. Yeah? And it was a nickname by outside, outsiders, those ones who were outside. It wasn't Christians themselves. It was at first used in Antioch, in the book of Acts 11, I believe. Um, and and, and they, they called the disciples Christians because they were Christ, they were doing what Christ did. They were little Christ. So, but the disciple, the word disciple is used 250 times, over 250 times. That's a, that's a, that's, that's a big, um, you know, step. So, we're going to talk a little bit about disciple, right? You know, and, and what, what is a disciple uh, equivalent to today, yeah? That's what we're going to ask ourselves. What, what's, um, like who's a tradesman here in this room? Who, who's a tradesman? I'm a tradesman. Who, what do you do? Uh, I'm not a tradesman now, but I, yep. I was a diesel, yep. diesel mechanic. Yep. So before you learned you know, diesel mechanics, and then you had to learn by the master. I mean, if you go back a few more years, you had to learn with somebody that knew, knew the trade, yeah? Yep. Yeah. So yeah, in the same way, in that time, you probably would have had made, made a few mistakes before you, you, know, you were confident on the tools, and, and uh, you know, obviously, yeah. And, and so, but there's a confusion about you know what a Christian is. So we'll go back to that that disciple, that the prince stage, because um, it's really important to understand what, what, what what's what we're going on, where we're coming from here. So, what a friend who we was two years ago became more involved in his separated parents. We realised that his faith was getting on the way of him, and so um, <clears throat> I want to share that because. Um, I have you know, this friend of mine. He's actually so so in tune with his Christian walk that you know his family, or you know, he understood that his mission for Jesus is, is way more important than his family. And he's left his family, and, and and obviously now, obviously there's a bit of a friction with what's going on, and and he he, he loves Jesus, but I think it, it can keep um, keep things um, yeah. If, if you're going down the wrong path and you leave your family, I think that again can cause, you know, um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of problems. But the word Christian, for instance, people say to me many times when I go out preaching, I say, hey, uh, I'm here to talk to you about God. And I'm like, oh, I'm a Christian. And um, I say, well, why is that? Is because oh, I was Christian as a, as a baby in the Lutheran church. Oh, okay, cool. Um, so... That's pretty cool to know. Um, let me let me tell you, you know, that that may not be the you know the the you know the real question that Jesus was talking about. Other people say I'm a member of a church. Now, have you ever had people say when you tell them about Jesus, what church do you go to? Straight away, like where, where you know which which church do you do you go to? And um, and that's that's because that's the uh, the lenses that they see things through. Or I go to church uh, services at Easter and Christmases times. That's all I go to church. But I'm a Christian. You know, I'm a good person. I pay my tithes, um, and I, I, I go to a place. It's like there has to be like a going. Or I live in a Christian country. Or I went to a Christian school. You know, that's another. Uh, many, many times I, I meet young people, especially. But when we take them through the understanding of the three circles and show them the gospel, they're like, "Oh, I'm not a Christian. I'm not. A, I'm far from it." So. Uh, or my parents were Christian. Yeah, a lot of time we, we get to see you know, people say, "Oh, my, because my parents are Christian, I'm Christian." So there's a big problem. We have a huge problem on our hands. You know that, that we recognise this is not an easy fix solution for you and I, but it does does give us a um, I guess a platform where we can start to correct things, firstly for us. And then getting out amongst people and start to you know clarify stuff with people and and then you know get rid of all the confusion, all the grey area. And so this is um, you know part of our team in Brisbane there. Um, this is in Kabulcha, I think. Um, yeah, this is Kabulcha. This is Nathan. Uh, this is Aaron and um, my brother. Um, I forgot his name. <laughs> Mona Solomona. So look, this young man here. He's all in for, for Jesus, and um, when, he, when he first came to repentance and faith in Christ, we did like a training just on the afternoon. We, we offered anyone to repent and, and get baptized, and I thought he was going to put his hand up, but he didn't put his hand up. And he came up to me and he says, hey, I really want to follow Jesus because I can see this is what God wants me to do. I feel strongly prompted in my spirit that, that I need to obey Jesus, but I've got a problem. 
I've got a girlfriend that I've been living with for five years, and he and, sh and she's my sweetheart from school, from high school, and I need to go and tell her that I met Jesus, and I want to ask her if she wants to come and follow Jesus together. We're not married, but if she's willing to say yes to Jesus with me, I'm willing to propose with her and do this life together. Um, but if she's willing not to, um, then I'm, I'm, I'm going to actually tell her that I can't see you anymore. I'm, I'm going to obey Jesus. And I'm like, wow, that's a strong conviction like, you know, to come out of that. Like, it was, I wasn't expecting that. And I, what do you do? Like, no, no, you need to get baptized now. No, I didn't do that. I said, no, he can hear from God. He's going to go and, and do what he says. So three months later, he rings me up and he says, well, I tried it. I tried to get him you know, to come to Jesus, but she wouldn't want to. I'm now living with my dad uh, in a tent on his property. And uh, I'm ready to be baptized and, and, and be baptized in Jesus' name and, um, you know, walk with Jesus. And I'm like, wow, okay, let's do it. So the following weekend, we met him in spring with, with Brother Tom Woodland and uh, we took him to the, to the pool after we took him through some, some healing and deliverance because obviously there's some confession that we take people through when we take him through baptism. Uh, it usually takes around an hour, um, sometimes long enough for women. Women um, you know, got a few more problems than men. I'm not, I'm not saying, no, they don't. We have big problems, in fact. But, but, but... No, sometimes even women got less than men problem. Right? I've seen men that want to stay there for two years. I'm um, two, two, oh, two years. Actually, there is physically two years. There's a process of healing and deliverance for one specific man that I'm, I'm thinking about right now. It, it, and even now, he's just coming out of that, out of his, you know. But it took a little time with him. Uh, his name is Wayne, and he loves Jesus. He uh, he inscribes rocks. Um, and and, and um, that's how he started his work. He on, on it's like flat rocks, and he puts scriptures on rocks. So if it's if it's the, the topic is love or the subject is love, on the other side you write one Corinthians thirteen and inscribe it with uh, you know those the drill guns, those um, and, and, you know, and, and and then what he does, he puts them in, in um, public places like public toilets, um, parks for men, um, in the shopping centres, um, just wherever in the phone boxes. And he, or he just gives them to them. Like when he comes out evangelizing with us, he'll take his bag and you know, he gets his guitar and he sings and he'll, and he'll see people come, up, come along and he'll get his bag with his rocks and he goes up to him and says, pick a rock. So, I mean, he wouldn't say that. He goes, put your hand in the bag. He's like, I don't want to put my hand in the bag. Like, the bag's this long and you have to put your bag all the way in. I'm like, I think these people don't want to put their hand in the bag. But anyway... The 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 um the thing that the gamble that they get and when they see the risk and then open it up the risk like we gently say no just do it you know and they they see a scripture like you know Isaiah uh, you know forty three eighteen nineteen or um, you know for, you know forget the former things not dwell on the past but just scriptures it's amazing um, but just uh, we allow, allow him to to grow in that way. Um, and, and you know, he was suffering from a lot of trauma from his life because he never got married. He was in the army, worked as an engineer on planes. Um, but when I first met him, he was hard case. He was rock solid. I couldn't get a word in. He would really like swear at me, like you know. And he would, he, he would, the words would come out of his mouth that I didn't even heard. There was words like that. But you know, he was bad. But when he submitted himself to God. Um, he became a new man, a new creation, and uh, even now he's off his medication. He fasts regularly. He prays in tongues. Uh, you know, he goes out there and does his part for the kingdom. He may not do exactly like what I do, but um, you know, I have to be gracious with him and then work with, on on his terms as well, because God's still working in his life, and I see a lot of good fruit in him, and I'm I'm so thankful that I met Wayne. But coming back to that that um, you know, with with brother. Um, Nathan, he decided to come to Jesus and it didn't take long before he got the hold of getting out there in the community and preaching the gospel. And he's still doing it um, today uh, and, and he loves Jesus. And So what is a disciple? A disciple is an old-fashioned word, yeah? So it's, 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 you know, um, it's really followers who, who chose to, to follow a, a rabbi. That's pretty much it, yeah? In those times, you know, uh, rabbis would, uh, sorry, followers would come to a rabbi and say, hey, I want to follow you, yeah? But Jesus was the other way around. He says, come and follow me, yeah? Um, but also Jesus chose his followers um, in the same way that were average men in their weaknesses and, um, you know, just everyday people. And, and, and so when we, when we see the, 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 you know, um, the green light for our lives in Christ, we want to imitate Christ as, more, as much as we can. And if we, we, we love Jesus, we get around you know, one or two people that really can aspire, hey, I want to walk with Christ. 
uh, I can actually learn some stuff from this person. And, and that's what I had to do. I had to go through a bit of a crash course and get around myself around people that made me feel uncomfortable, that they had time for me. They, they, I, qu I question a lot of stuff as, as I'm growing and I made a lot of mistakes as well. But the more uh, I, I, I submitted myself to the process, I grew. I was, I was just getting uncomfortable in places where uh, I knew this is out of my comfort zone. And so coming back to the apprentice style, um, I couldn't learn this for, from, you know, and, and, and even the disciples didn't learn by sitting down as a student, yeah? In, in the classroom, when, you know, it's, it's the other way around actually. You just come to school and, and the teacher stands up here and then just say, right, get your books out, your pens, and, and, and this, you know, I'm gonna, this is the topic. And then they sit there and then they go to university and even after university, three, four years, I, I can guarantee you now they're still not qualified. And like, oh, I don't know what, what I'm doing. I'm a teacher. I'm supposed to like meet these students, but I, I don't have a clue about being in the classroom because it's all been theory, uh, you know, until that point. And so some of you might, you know, might sort of, you know, understand what I'm saying here. But me, I'm a tradesman as well, and I, I'm a, I learned how to be a painter by being around a master painter. Yeah. You get educated into stupidity at university. Yeah. Crazy university as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You get educated into stupidity. Yeah. The best learning point. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> we are going to make mistakes. So that's the equivalent word for disciples and apprentice. So I'm, I'm an apprentice for Jesus. I'm just watching my master. I'm learning as I'm going. I'm, I'm gauging um, you know, the people that are, are a little, little bit more uh, you know, in, 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 in this walk with Christ than me. And I'm willing to ask the hard questions. And I guess I had to align myself under a father's heart where um, you know, if I want to raise sons, mature sons and daughters of God, I want to get myself under a father's heart. Uh, of course, my, my thirst is my heavenly father, but I still have to align myself to someone who has, a, has experience and has been doing it for way longer than me. Uh, and I think that's really, really important. And so listen that I learned about three or four years ago, because I got hurt. I got hurt by pastors and leaders, and I didn't want to let anybody in my life anymore. I was like, no way, um, you know, I'm not making friends with you because you've got, you know, wrong motives. But then God brought me this one beautiful heart, a person that, uh, you know, he's been in the missions. He, uh, you know, you can see the the, the, the fruit of his life. He he uh, he really cares. He loves. I sense that in a strong way. He had time for me. I ring him up today and say, hey, can we meet in two days' time or next week? And like, yep, we can meet. Uh, not, not just like, oh, I'm too busy because I've got to watch over 100,000 100, other churches, uh, you know, local and overseas. Because that's some of these people are very busy. Uh, but I, I just seen, seen that here a lot of time. So the reason I, I, I wanted to share that is because is, um, I want to follow Jesus. And, and if the pattern was written there by Apostle Paul, you know, um, you know met Timothy, and Apostle Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, um, it says here, And the things thou that heard of me amongst many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. So really, that's how we learn from, from others that, that can actually teach us, so we can teach others the same thing. So really, it's about raising mature sons and daughters in God. That's, that's the, the heart bone, the, the heart and, and the backbone be, be, you know, behind being a follower of Christ, a disciple. And it's really important that, that, that I got that. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful for um, you know, others that are around me now that I'm discipling that they can see a father's heart. And I, I hope I, I have a father's heart towards them because I'm trying my best to you know, really care for them, be there when I get a phone call or when I, I have to drop everything and, and, and go to a certain you know, wedding or a, uh, you know, a, um, a, um, just whatever it might be. Uh, you know, a funeral. I uh, recently went, went to a funeral because someone passed away, but because his heart was with his friend, I decided to go along as well. So that's sort of the sort of thing that, uh, that we have to get involved in, 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 in fathering people. So it's going to cost us everything. Like the gift of God, uh, faith and the gift of eternal life is free, but it's going to cost us everything um, you know, to, to, to be involved in and to bear good fruit, uh, fruit that will last for an eternity. I just put conditions on the call. Oh well, um, you know, um, I, I, I can't, um, I can't right now follow you, Jesus, because I've got to bury my father. I can't right now because I just got married and I've got to look after my family. I can't right now because, um, you know, I just bought a, a field, a land. There's all, all these reasons why why we can't 
uh, you know, follow Jesus. But Jesus calls call to follow him wherever he goes and whatever he does. And so you can put your, um, you know, your um, statement there. I'm a disciple of Jesus because he gave himself for me, and he wants to. He wants me to be like him. So therefore, if I want to be like him, I, I want to be able to allow him to, to you know, make make him the Lord of my life. And uh, I have been crucified with Christ in Galatians 2:20. It's one of my favorite scriptures. It is no longer I that live, but He that lives in me now lives. And that's that's the key: is to be able to apply yourself to the the process of becoming a disciple, a disciplined person. Because we're in a war. Who knows we're in a, in a serious war? And and the enemy has a lot of knowledge. And um, I, I know he has a lot of power, and a lot of knowledge. Uh, because of the so many messed up people that we see around us. Um, and, 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 but Jesus gave you and I authority over the enemy, according to Luke 10, um, is it Luke uh, 10, 19, I believe. Um, it says that I'll give you all authority, um, you know, to trample on snakes and scorpions under all the power of the enemy, so you may not be hurt. Is that Luke 10, 19? Uh, it's in Luke 11, at the tail end of Luke. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's Luke 10, 10, 19. I'm pretty sure, but anyway, if it's not, please correct me. So we, we have been given authority by, by, by Jesus himself to be like him, you know, to go into all the world and, and, and do what he asks us to do. So we, we have something to be thankful for. Um, so an apprentice learns by watching the master, yeah? He learns by copying the master and he learns by obeying the master, yeah? Students learn by memorizing and they learn by reading and listening, yeah? That's, that's what I was talking before. The current, current attitude that um, there's a lot of babies you know, in our fellowships around us. And I think this is where I was saying before, we've got to admit there's a problem before we can come you know, and fix something. You know? Before you, you know something's broken, you have to look, okay, this is broken, I need to repair it. So we need to know what it is and take it apart. And, and, and um, you know, it's, it's just, I, I can't even fathom what, I, what I'm seeing. Even like I was saying to uh, Russell before, uh, with, a, with a family member, sister-in-law. We've been praying with her for a few years now. You know my brother. And we had a few discussions just recently that was challenging. But for a few years that I've known her, she's come to deliverance uh, you know, to us, myself and, and, and my wife, and we laid hands on her, cast some demons out of her a few times. And, um, and um, they keep coming back. And I said, recently I said to her, why don't you go back to those places? Why? Because you're getting the spirit that's in there in you. And, and then just out of nowhere, the Holy Spirit was, I said, you're in sin. That's what I said. I'd, and my wife looked at me and she goes, oh, I, don't, I hope you didn't say that. But I did. It was, it was the Holy Spirit. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to condemn her or anything, but I love her. But it just came out. And then it was not fun after that. It was like, okay, we've got to like do something here. Um, either we're going to get out of here quickly or we're going to try to, you know, um, I looked at my brother, I'm like, but he's like, no, I'm out of this. So I'm, you know. But anyway, what happened out of that? So what, what happened in the end, um, it took a, a couple of weeks for us to settle down a little bit uh, about it, but really that's what's going on. There's no growth in those places. People aren't growing. So if people aren't growing, there's a problem. If we have, you know, People going to fellowships like this for 18 years and they're still on the milk. That's a problem. If the Apostle Paul even says, by now you should be on the meat of the Word of God and I have to speak to you in an earthly term, um, you know, that you, you aren't. You're know, like babies still, um, you know, coming back to the, you know, the simple basics of repentance, baptism, you know, um, hell and heaven, which is, it's, you know, it's, it's the truth. And I think this is what's not okay. People aren't growing. we are made... Being a disciple, a specialty job that it's it's you know um, that it's it's not for everyone. Like it is, it is for everyone. Become a disciple of Jesus for everybody. And I'm I'm not I'm, I'm just want to give a practical example around that because um, I, I recently was talking to a friend of mine who's in leadership and he he loves Jesus. Um, but I said to him, hey, you know, you could actually use what we're doing here and and, and benefit your congregation, the people that you know that are um, you know that have wanting to do more and he's, he's like sat with me and we, I've known for a few years so we had this kind of heart to heart conversation but in, in the end um, the conversation went along well I have to give up my position as a pastor to do what you're doing and, 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 and he didn't say it like that but that's how I understood it 
because the role of it on, on pastor so-and-so, that's a position. And if you lose that position to become a disciple, it's like you have to go back to zero. And it's like, that's hard work. It's not my identity. But that's the sort of struggle that we have and challenges with some of the leaders that we're praying with. And, 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 and obviously we're friends with people, but in the end we have to tell them the truth and say, hey, it's not okay you know, your people to be in that, that fellowship and they're following you, but where are the disciples? You know, you're making converts to your membership of your fellowship and you've got like 200 people here and you're looking to do another sister church, but where are the disciples going out, like going to, do, to obey Jesus? These are followers. They're just coming to church and they're doing all the things that you tell them to do and, and you know, this is the, the Western world that we live in. Unfortunately, we, we live in a very, very... Um, time of deception and, and lies and, 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 and yeah, error. And that's all I can say, it's a spirit of error that's entered and crept in uh, for some time now. And um, we had to identify that when we came out of that to, to really get it. And um, yeah, um, I want to keep going, but one quick story around how we recognize that it's a spirit of error. Um, after we were excommunicated out of this prophetic church that we were in for a few years, we led um, you know, children's ministry there for some time and we, we thought the real you know, meetings were happening with children's church because it was really amazing what was happening with the kids, kids you know, gathering and stuff. They were speaking tongues, they were praying for the sick and they were equipped. But um, when we got, you know, we got told to leave, um, my brother stayed there, one, another brother, not that one that I said, he stayed with his girlfriend there and about a year and a half later, he rings me up and he goes, I'm getting baptized um, you know, in two weeks. Do you want to come to my baptism? And I'm like, dude, I'm not going back there. You know, that's my first impression. I don't want to go back in there. But I'm like to myself, no, I need to go and support. This is the decision that he's making, so I need to be supporting. And my wife looked at me and she goes, well, you need to like, ask Pastor so-and-so because you know, I don't think he wants to hear from us. And I'm like, well, I'll talk to him. So then I messaged him. I didn't want to go on the phone. Uh, but anyway, I just texted him, and I could have called call him anyway, but I said, hey, my brother's being baptized, do you mind if we come to the fellowship and, and on a Sunday morning and have lunch after? He goes, yeah, absolutely, come. Well, when we were in there, uh, what, what we noticed that we didn't see is, I didn't know, but, I mean, I saw, I felt uncomfortable, but my wife had a vision. When we went in there, as the worship and praise was happening, obviously this room is very black, it's all black, it's got lights everywhere, and there's only lights at the front. And, uh, but while we're doing worship, and she only told me this after the, the meeting, she said, I saw two huge snakes go in and around the, 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 you know, the chairs, all around, and they were moving all around. And, and she said, the Lord told me that these were the prophetic words with fangs that were giving people that are here because they were prophesying in a way that they would actually, you know, uh, make them to stay there. And I'm like, far out. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't really see that when we're there because we're in it. We're in the midst of it. We couldn't see it. But when we stepped out for a year and a half, almost two years, then we went back, then God started opening our eyes to see the reality of the spirits that are in there. Uh, anyway, we, we just began to continue praying for them. And even until today, I, 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 I haven't been back there, but I... I'm, I'm very careful and aware what's going on in some of these fellowships and meetings. Um, so I'm glad that we can st start coming back on, on track because I want this life, you know what I mean? I want to live this life as, as a disciple and, and as an ambassador for Jesus. So how, how does that look like? What, what do we, you know, who trains us? Like what do we need to do to be like Christ? Because obviously he's not in the physical form now. He died, he rose again after he was born in the tomb and he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. But... How do we do this life now? Because he's up there. We have to understand that we are his hands and feet today. He's looking at us to do what he did. We have the Bible. We have the Holy Spirit. So how do we, who trains us? Well, people who actually are working with Christ, and you can see Christ and then let your heart open to what God wants to do and just get around people who are doing it. And just start doing it. Just get out and, and doing the disciple life. Just begin to lay hands on people, see them healed. Start sharing the gospel. Start praying for someone who is, you know, often. I do it often. And, um, yeah, I'm so grateful that, that this is the, the life that we have to, you know, start to do. Um, it's just do it. You know, not, not just, um, you know, there's a pastor that came at, um, at one of our outreaches, after we've been going there for over a year and a half in Logan Central. Anyway, he comes at the, at the night one night, and I see him twice in a row now, because he came a fortnight before that, and he came this fortnight, and I go, what are you doing here? 
because he asked me lots of questions like you guys are you know um, been here for a while I can tell and and then I, then, then he, then he, and I said well what are you doing here and he says well the Lord told me a month ago I was preparing to speak in my church and as I'm sitting there in, my, in, my, in the front seat there's people there waiting to hear a message while the worship was play, play, playing um, the Lord spoke to me he says get off the seats and into the streets that's all he said to him and he says that's why I'm here I'm here because God told us to get out there and start to do this thing that we're always talking about week after week and we're never doing it. So now we're here to learn. So I'm glad that you obeyed the voice of God and, and Jesus said to them, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. So he makes us fishers, yeah? The Holy Spirit is the great teacher and, and, the comf and, and he's our comfort. So we need the body of Christ to do this. We need men and women together, like my sister saying here, Delise, and I can say it right, she said we all have different giftings, we, we all play a part. Everyone in this, this body here has got different specific functions. One's a hand, one's an eye, one's an ear. We all have to operate learning how to do a body ministry. And that's that's a beautiful thing to know because greater works than these we, we will do because I go to my father, when I think of that, that picture, it's like we have a body of ministers here now. Jesus was just one person and he had his disciples, but we have men and women are ready to, to, you know, to do this together. And that's why it's going to become greater works for me anyway maybe you have a different understanding of that verse but when I look at that verse that's what, how I see things so we, we've got to work as, as a um, you know, as, as a togetherness so Paul says imitate me as I imitate Christ so I'm almost finished here I've got about seven eight slides to go so Luke 6.24 uh, 6.40 sorry who wants to read that can you see that Christine yeah. well, if you read it please the disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master, and the servant as his lord. Yep, thank you. And someone, Matthew 10, 24. The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. Excellent. 1 Peter 2, 21. Who wants to do that one? Yep, thank you. Because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. Commit, he committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. Excellent, thank you. So, <clears throat> Jesus is perfecting us, yeah? And um, he's fully equipped. So the call to Jesus is to ultimately become uh, like him in every way. If, if you see Romans 12... 12, 1 and 2, it says there, um, you know, that to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice unto him and to not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed daily by the renewal of our mind and renewal of our thinking. That's a daily repentance. We've got to repent daily because the word repent um, comes from the word metanoia, which is to think again today in the light of what I know. I want to think again how I'm going to do my life. That's repentance. Um, but daily has to happen. In other parts of the world, they call um, you know, Christians or the people in the way repenters. I know where I come from, Romania, in 19, before 1989, it was a communism country. Or around that time, they, they got rid of communism and, and made a dem dem democracy country. Um, but I remember they used to call us this, um, Christians repenters because we, 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 they knew they knew we, we, we carry, you know, and we, we're different. And I think if, if we can get, um, you know, the people in the West to call us repentors, it would be a good thing. <laughs> um, anyway, I got persecuted at a very, very young age uh, there. I don't want to go into, you know, maybe another time, but um, I want to keep going. Apprentices, apprenticeship with Jesus, um, <clears throat> it's got to look like something. So we can be like Jesus and, and do what, what he did. We're to follow, um, you know, as we follow him, he makes us more and more like him. Um, so just like I said to you, I'm an apprentice for Jesus. I'm learning. I'm actually on my way to growing and, and developing my, uh, you know, my giftings and the things that, that's inside of me. Um, so I, I need to be aware of, um, of others as well and in their growth. And so my natural inclination is, how can I help another brother in Christ who wants to learn to be Christ? Or how can I help him to get out there and, and preach the gospel? How can we get around the Word of God regularly on a consistent basis so I can help him teach the Word to teach the Word? See, I didn't say to teach him the Word, but to teach and train him the Word so he can go and train someone else. That's, that's the direction of, of what Jesus did. So 
We need to do the things that he did. Live in every way that he did. Peter walked on water. So he, stood, he, he actually stepped out of the boat, um, you know, um, and then he walked on water. But just like Jesus cleared, you know, the room, um, you know, to, you know, to pray for, I believe, was Lazarus. Um, the same way as well, the apostles afterwards, they had to clear the room um, in order to, pr- to, pl- to pray and, and raise um, and the Tal- Talitha, or was that Jesus raised her as well? Who did Paul raise? I'm just trying to think now. Who I know here? Oh, that's the yeah, Paul was preaching, and the guy fell off the window um, out of, out of, on the fourth, fourth, fifth floor, and then they went and, and yeah, raised him up. But there was some other people in, in you know in the New Testament there. I can't remember anyway. People healed, um, you know, by handkerchiefs that were you know touched by by Paul. So even the shadow of Peter healed people. Wow. So I, I'm not sure about you, but I, this is a, this is the Word of God. This is what we see written in our Word, and um, you know I want to see that. I, I really want to see that today, and we, we can see it because we don't have a little Holy Spirit, you know, than, than what Christ had. He was full of spirit and might, but He's given us His Spirit now. Yeah. So He lives in us. The one that rose Jesus from the dead, the same Spirit, you know, is in us. Is in you and I. We have to really understand, He didn't give us a little spirit and say, well, I'll just give him a little spirit. No, He's given us the same Holy Spirit as He had. So that, that's where I, I was like, I'm, I'm done. When I recognized that, I'm like, oh my gosh, He like, did have the same Holy Spirit as Jesus. I'm trying to go and do it. So then I started praying for him. Oh, He didn't got healed. I went and tried to cast this demon. Oh, I didn't, didn't no, nothing, nothing happened. Not even a twitch. Then I kept doing it. I kept praying. Oh, Oh, they got healed. Uh, I, the, the pain was 9 out of 10, now it's 3 out of 10. Oh, yes, it's working. So I started stepping out and doing, doing what Jesus did. Even though it felt uncomfortable, it felt like that's the old me. I didn't know I, I could lay hands on people by faith and see people healed. And that's the Holy Spirit, you know, to, to, to get a hold of you and you step into doing it. Just two weeks ago, we led a person to Christ. He got baptized and then he repented from his sin. That following week, I took him out into the, um, you know, I, I, I took him out. I said, let's go out and pray for some people. Uh, let's, let's look for someone who's got pain. And we walked up to these two island guys and one of the guy had a, a real sore ankle. In fact, his whole body was sore, but the, the worst problem that he had on that day was his ankle. And Azar, he's only been saved like two weeks, like literally, he's only learned the Bible five weeks ago. But I said, all right, Azza, your turn to pray for so-and-so. His name is Lay, actually. And anyway, he put his hand on his, his um, ankle. And obviously, he didn't know what to say, but I said, pray with me. Say, in the name of Jesus, all pain in this ankle to go. All ligaments um, and muscles be, um, be restored right now in Jesus' name. Okay, check it. And he's like, no, no. He was like, and this is as I was looking, he's got a big smile on his face. Like, this is his first time. He doesn't know anything else apart from, like, this is normal to him. You know, he's never been into a church or into a place where, he's never set foot in a place where there's, you know, the Word of God being taught. 22 years old and, and just learning. So, so that's, that's the practical things, um, you know, we have to teach young disciples or people who come in with the kingdom to show them. So, just, <clears throat> the disciples did, you know, they... they they were, um, they were, uh, made, they made mistakes. That's what I'm coming to. So, and when they made a mistake, Jesus didn't go like, "Oh, you wicked servant, um, you know, you can't do this. Get out of the way. I'm going to look for someone else." No, he he says, he, he sat down with them and says, "This type will only come out with prayer and fasting." But he says, "You have little faith. How long shall I be with you?" So he walked with them. He he showed his, you know, he you know his heart towards them. Um, and that, that's the same way that we have to show with, with other people in our, in our life. So we, we learn by, from experience as well. Um, <clears throat> it's not okay you know, not to grow. And, and that's what we've got we to recognize. This is really important. Um, experience is, is, is a good thing to have, but I, I, don't, I don't really base my faith on just experience. And oh, well, yesterday when I prayed for the rain to stop, it stopped. So then I'm going to pray again for other things. It's going to happen. I think we've got to just walk with God and, and things will happen as they do because it's obedience. Faith um, is obedience. It's not like I believe, um, you know, with my heart, with my, my, with my heart I believe, with my mouth I confess that Jesus is Lord, uh, you know, and therefore that's all I need to do is believe. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's part of it, but we need to obey, yeah? Because the opposite of belief is disobey, yeah? 
show that when we have faith and belief, we obey Jesus. That's what faith really is, obeying our master. So we don't need a special anointing to go and vacuum the house, yeah? I mean, I don't know about you, I, I think I can you know, learn how to vacuum a house or how to clean my car. Do you need a special anointing to wash the dishes, Russell, or cook some food? No, <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah, yeah, I know. And, and Polly, you don't need a special anointing to do some ironing. Hey, no. Yep. So what, what, so, so what, so we need, we need to practice. That's what it's about. It's about practicing. Practice, practice, practice. And so, Yep. Yeah, there he goes. So he practiced. Someone showed him. I'm sure you showed him, Bella. And he learned. There you go. So, so this is where I'm coming off. We hear these like stories like we have to be, we have to have special anointing to heal the sick. We have to be really anointed. Oh, he comes preacher from America and he has the anointing. Let's all go and flock to him what he's doing. No, he doesn't have a special anointing. He's just practicing what he's doing and we should just get out there and practice. That's all it is. How many times have I failed and how many times you will fail? Many times. In fact, in life you will fail many times before you perfect. I know I did that I did that in finances. I, I learned to lose a lot of money in business and stuff, but I learned from, from some, some mistakes that I made. And I learned from that. I didn't repeat that mistake again. I knew. But, but that's how you learn. You grow by failing, by, by falling over, getting up. Falling over, getting up. So, uh, fear not. That's another thing I can say. Don't fear. Yeah, if it's, if, if you know, the angels will come in, you know, to different services, fear not. Uh, I'm sure that it's good for us to, we don't, we don't have any fear. Um, and, and 365 times is written in the Bible, fear not. That's once for every day uh, you know, of the year. Isn't that cool to know? I didn't know that until recently. Someone told me. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, that's something that you know so that we, so Jesus gave us a model to replicate yeah so he trained the disciples 3.5 years uh, three and a half years he spent time with his you know his followers those ones that he um, you know he spent time with but even after Jesus ascended they failed straight away even Peter you know denied him straight away um, but he gave us the Holy Spirit now to um, to continue the work of Jesus so he didn't just go up in heaven and say well you know um, I'm just going to wait here until the Father God sends me back to get you. No, He actually wants to use us to be to do what He did. Generations down the line, uh, you know, we were, we were meant to look more like Jesus. So we have changed this model. Oh, sorry, yeah, we have changed this model, and it doesn't look no more like Luke 10. And I think Luke 10, one of us is going to do it tomorrow, and uh, we're going to go through, you know, verse by verse to verse 11, I think. And there's a good, um, good strategy that God is still using today. Luke 10, you don't have to go anywhere else to really understand how do I go reach lostness. All it is, it's in your Bible. Luke 10 is a good, good um, uh, understanding on that. So I hope you come tomorrow to be able to, to, to you know, um, to dissect what Luke 10 with, you know, with the one that's leading. So the early church were effective, they produced fruit, they experienced the power of God, and they were slow and steady to start with, but then there was a rapid growth. It's like I mentioned about that, that guy David Watson in 1978. There was a, a you know, there was a steadiness at the beginning, three, four years, but after four and a half years, it exploded, it accelerated, and that's what it requires. It's a steady walk by walk, day by day, consistently being disciplined, having the activities to do to be able to, be able to grow. Um, and so, cha um, they changed the world, yeah? So, do we want to see Jesus continue to change the world today? Well, I do, because this is what the world looks like today. Yeah, Isaiah 45, 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. The Lord do, um, you know, does all these things. So I, the Lord, do all these things. So really, have a think about the world that we live in. And, and, and when we actually understand why Jesus put us into this world, we recognize, you know, look at, look at this, the state that was happening at the moment. Drug use, corruption at every level, you know what I mean? Um, and, and you know, I don't want to read them out because you can see them for yourself there. It's pretty full on what's happening around us, and um, it's not getting any better unless we start to to start to be real with Jesus and um, and, and get ready to be rejected, get ready to uh, people aren't going to like you, uh, people are going to persecute you, uh, they're going to talk ill against you, but that's okay. Uh, we need rejection. We need to uh, to experience that because that's how we grow. Yeah, we have to have thick skin. I know Australians are thick skin people. Um, you know, in, certain, in the wrong things. 
But um, I know that once you get Australian to the Lord and you really understand discipleship and walk with Jesus, I believe that Australia will come to Jesus. Um, you know, all of Australia will know Jesus um, in quite a short time. Um, we don't have to like, like you know, like you know, really pretend like, oh well, it may happen, it may not. Um, you know, this Jesus thing of angels. This is, this is something for the future. It's not for me right now. You know, the kingdom of God will come, but not now. You know, the revival will come sometime in, in, in you know, 10 years or 50 years from now. No, revival starts now with you and I. You know, God wants to revive our hearts to this reality so we can actually see other people revived and walk around with those things that they, they take in you know, the hospital, the ambulance, when people, you know, they lose consciousness, they come with these things, they and they, they, they get them up, they waken them up, and they start breathing again. We have to walk around spiritually with one of those around, and then wake people up to, to you know who we are, because we have a we have a, 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 a you know a people to, to win for Christ. And I love I love uh, I love you know God's people. I love His church, and I, I know that you know I said I don't use church anymore, but He's the, the ecclesia. Uh, we still got to recognise that you know that we are the salt and light. Uh, to the world, and we can't be critical of, my, of our, 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 our brothers and sisters because they're not doing it. Because if we really, if we really were any better, then we'd be doing it and be modeling for them and be an example so they too can come and do it. Because God wants to use them. Sorry. Two more. Two more. Yeah. Okay. So I'm always finished. Thanks for your, you know, your patience. I know it went, went, went longer than I, I, I expected, but I, I, I just wanted to touch, touch on all those points that I, I mentioned. So. <clears throat> our response is to take the gospel out there. We have the answers to this mess. Nobody else has the answer. Yeah? And um, we can't keep going and doing meetings after meetings, programs after programs. Um, you, know, um, you know, what we have done in the past is not working. That's pretty much the whole heart of this. Being a Christian by name is not going to cut the mustard. We have to really understand the life that we're called for. And... and um, the church should be leading society today, not not we are following it. You know, I mean, that's what was happening at the moment. Oh, the, the the minister of so and so of that party said this. Let's all comply. No, we should be the backbone of a good government, not be followers of an institution, of a society, or a corporation. I don't want to go into that because um, you know I'll just get get you know caught up in it. But I, I love my fellow um, ministers in the government. I pray for them. I fast and I seek God. I say, God, turn so and so's heart to you and his family. I bless them, God. I pray for their salvation. Lord, they will repent from their sin. That you wake them up in their sleep. Don't give them rest until they know you. I'm praying consistently. I have been for four years, even for the state of the church or the ecclesia. I'm praying. I'm praying. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful to God. He's opened a few doors to partner with a few. Um, pastors and leaders that we can you know, allow this to go through and yes, Denise. Countercultural. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Very, very good, good thing to, to think about. And, and so we've got to recognize even the word says, Woe to those who call good evil and evil good. And so uh, we have been called to, uh, to be holy, set apart, uh, without blemish. And um, you know the Bible, the word in Jesus says, "Come out from amongst them. Don't touch any unclean thing. For I'm holy," says the Lord. Therefore, you be holy. And how does holy living like? Looking like Jesus, going out, healing the sick. That's holiness because you're seeing God every day. I don't go and a day that's boring for me. I'm being honest. Being a believer and disciple is not a boring life. I tell my friends, and they say, well, if I come to Christ, you know, I have to give up my smoking, I have to give up my partying. I'm like, dude, you don't know what you're giving up. You've got to give that up because there's an adventure waiting for you to, to, to step into your destiny and do incredible things that you've never really dreamed in your biggest dream. You think, you think your big dreams are big? Wait till you get on God's dreams because it's bigger than your biggest dream. I said, and that's the truth. You don't have to give you have to give your life up, yeah. But it's 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 the reality is that that God wants to make your life and improve your life. He doesn't want to take anything away from us. We are holy people, a holy remnant, a people called by God with His own name. Like in fact, when He called us out of darkness into light, He actually wrote our names in the book of life. He wrote our names there. Wow. So when one person comes to Christ, guess what happens? There's a celebration that happens in heaven, and um, all heaven's 
pauses and celebrates with us witnesses here on earth when one sinner repents and turns to Jesus. And I had the privilege just in the last five weeks to see four people get water baptized, repented wholeheartedly. That's through us, but then there's other fellowships that we see come to Christ and repent and get baptized and get plugged into a fellowship like this, a micro church, a micro fellowship where they can learn this stuff. Praise God. So we're finished now. So the call for Jesus is simply this. Jesus calls us to follow him, not him to follow us. Jesus is a saviour and uh, also he's the Lord. But when Jesus calls a man, he bids him to come and die. Yeah? So who wants to read uh, yeah, Mark 10, 28, 30? We'll finish off with that. Uh, maybe Liz, would you like to read that? Can you see it? Then Peter began to say to him, See, we have left all and followed you. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left, um, left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or and or land or land. So tired. For my sake and the gospel. Who shall not receive a hundredfold now this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution, persecutions and in the age to come eternal life? Wow, thank you. Wow, so discipleship is about serving Jesus, obeying him and his way. He's calling us right now. And are we ready to follow? And are we ready to go where our master leads? And are we willing to sacrifice our own desires for his? Are we ready to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? And, and this is what he's um, telling us that we'll have if we do that. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children, uh, you know, and lands with persecution. That is a big one, persecution. And in this age to come, an eternal life. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really in... in um, I'm really lost for words because many of us in this room, I know, we're here because God's placed us here. God's brought us here to say, you know what, let's get together and, um, and get wired for heaven. Uh, I know for me, I'm, I'm willing to just be honest and, and just tra transparent, I guess. And um, I'm, I'm undone, I'm overwhelmed by the work that's before us. But with His grace, with His hand on us, and with um, obviously with just step by step, day by day, one day at a time through Jesus, that's all I'm asking from you, it's possible. And, and that's my heart and my, my heart's prayer. So I want to finish and pray. Father, thank you for uh, this beautiful teachings on uh, and, and learning about disciple or Christian. Which one are we? God, uh, you, you taught us, God, uh, many, many things over the years. But today, I want, I want you to arrest each one of us and then show us part of our hearts where we, maybe we haven't fully surrendered or maybe we don't understand some things and maybe we don't know how to get started in this discipleship life of really going out and, and seeing this, this Australia people, the, the people in this land, um, you know, come to Christ, not just, you know, trying to, you know, stru struggle and say, come to know Jesus and, and, and know that they were willing to submit to your will, God, that we would have um, you know, the gospel for them, say, this is the way that you should go and they can see it model in us and they're like, yeah, well, if that's the way, I'm going too because I don't want to live my horrible life. Uh, I want to live the life of Christ Jesus. I want to submit my myself to the one who made me, who made me his beautiful image. So today, I pray that every, um, you know, Every person in this in this room will have an open heart surgery and to you know to come and do something inside of us, in all of us, including me, so we will be wide forever, God, uh, in the direction that you're going. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen.